For more on all this, Mercedes Schlapp, a Republican strategist and former spokesperson for President George W. Bush. Joe Trippi managed Howard Dean's 2004 presidential campaign and is a Fox News contributor. Good to see you both. Good to be with you. Hello. All right, Mercy, got to start with this. There is a lot of criticism from the right and the left on Obamacare. The right wants to know why self-imposed deadlines the GOP had on Capitol Hill for having parts of this legislation ready. They're not making it. There's not anything on the president's desk for him to sign. Uh, you know, and even Senator Graham saying this weekend that the GOP is in knots on Capitol Hill. They got to get it together. Well, that, that absolutely. I think that this idea of repeal and replace, some of them are calling it repair. Uh, it's more complicated uh, than than, than people think. I think you have to realize that this is going to take a, a significant amount of time to be able to repeal and replace. In some cases, as we're seeing, that the Republicans are changing their tone a little bit to call it uh, repair Obamacare. And of course, you're seeing even within the GOP that they're, they're not agreeing between the Freedom Caucus mm -hmm. and then you have uh, Republican leadership. So I think they've got to find an area of common ground in certain areas like the health savings account uh, situation, like high risk pools. Uh, I think you're going to see keeping part of the Obamacare in terms of pre-existing conditions. I, I think you're going to keep that as well, well. So I think the challenge for Republicans is that they recognize that this is uh, incredible. Uh, one of the most important things they need to get done in these, in these first mm -hmm. 100 days during this congressional period. But they got to get it right. It's got to be foolproof, is the way I explain it. In the meantime, the left is not going to let them have an easy, easy time of doing that, whether it's repair, replace, whatever it's going to be. Uh, they are very organized, and they've uh, got some really good detailed guides out there telling people how to take on their GOP lawmakers uh, in their town halls. It's something that uh, Republican Mark Sanford saw this weekend in Charleston. Here's a bit of his experience. Let's not make this a referendum in terms of our job as elected folks in South Carolina on what we do or don't like with Donald Trump. Because at the end of the day, I, I'm going to try and speak up where I can. I'll leave it to him where he's going to speak up where he can. But it's the Irish prayer of, you know, we can control certain things, certain things we can't control. Mm. Joe, that was an, a meeting that was supposed to go an hour. It went more than three and a half hours. So the left also doing its best to uh, preserve the ACA. Well, well, Democrats and the left all know what they want. They want to keep Obamacare. There's a lot of unanimity around that. And so it's very easy to mobilize uh, and to make your case. And, and people do want... Uh, to keep the pre-existing conditions and they want to be able to keep their kids who are under 26 on their health care plans. A lot of things that they know they, they want and the problem I think as Mercedes pointed out um, there isn't any agreement on the other side. I mean there may be agreement about getting rid of Obamacare uh, among Republicans and conservatives but there's no agreement on how to do it. Uh, they, they, they are tending to agree on keeping pre-existing conditions, pre, uh, keeping uh, young, uh, young people on, uh, the, on many similar things. So I think that you're, you're likely to see more repair than, than, re, than you know, repeal and replace. Mm -hmm. But they can't even agree on that. They can't. And, and paying for all this, if you remove the mandates, uh, which is a key uh, to, to, to Trump and, and many, I think, on the right, uh, if you remove those, how do you pay for this? And mm -hmm. so that, that's all got to get figured out. And since they don't have a plan that they've all agreed to, they're getting picked apart. I mean, yeah. they, they're getting the anger coming out against them. It's incredibly complicated no matter how you try to tackle it. By the way, just for you guys, while you've been speaking, we have a new tweet from the president. We want to let you uh, have a chance to react. He says, meeting with generals at Mar-a-Lago in Florida, very interesting. We know that he is vetting uh, a handful of folks, including some generals, uh, potentially to be his new NSA uh, advisor. Um, Mercy, what do you make of that tweet? We hear we're going to get something from the White House shortly. We have no idea whether it has to do with the NSA or something else, but he's always got us on the edge of our seats. Well, obviously, yes, but I think this is an incredibly important pick um, to ensure that you have a national security advisor who you can trust, someone you can lean on who's going to give you the important advice on foreign affairs. You know, obviously what we saw with Michael Flynn was, an, was incredibly disappointing on how uh, he managed his affairs and, and did not uh, give the right information to the vice president. Uh, you know, the national security advisor is one of the closest allies to the president, and it's key that President Trump needs to feel comfortable with that pick. And Joe, uh, any thoughts on the kind of person he will eventually select? I mean, the last time around he says that his man didn't do anything wrong, but there were some misunderstandings in, involving the vice president, and he thought it was time that he resigned. The vice president has agreed and said he was disappointed about inaccurate information he was given. Uh, how does he make this next pick? 
Well, it's interesting to me because I think John Bolton, uh, UN ambassador, former UN ambassador, is probably closer to Trump's foreign policy than when he's espoused. Uh, Bolton's probably the closest to him uh, among the the four or five that we've heard about. On the other hand, he's not a he's not a military, not a general, uh, which was you know General mm -hmm. Flynn, and the others others all are. The other candidates all seem to be. So it's going to be interesting to see which way he he goes there. Fundamentally, though, it may be d come down to. Uh, do they get to put their own team in, or, mm -hmm. or yeah. no? You you come in and you have Flynn's team or the majority of it. Well, so all these things are in the air right yeah. now. But I think it's a, I agree with Mercedes. Very important pick. They got to yeah. get this done fast. And it sounds like White House Chief of Staff Rance Priebus was saying on the Sunday shows this weekend that whomever is picked will get to put together their own team. So we'll see if that's what we're getting from the White House this afternoon. Of course, we'll take folks there live as soon as we get it. Uh, Mercedes and Joe, great to see you both. Great to see Good you. With you.